<laughs> As you can probably see from the title of this, it's a podcast and the idea is to show the Dota community who the people behind the mods are. How are they make mods and their thoughts on various topics around the Frost of His competition, which is a contest for custom games where the best mod wins 30,000 US dollars being held by Valve. For a lot of people, the concept of making games is a mystery. And even if you do know how to make games, modding is often a different environment. So let's get into the guests. We have Toyo Koda and Vic Frank. So say hello. Hello. How's it going? Um, tell me a bit about you, uh, Toyo Koda. You butchered my name, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I've been part of the uh, modding community, uh, the source modding community for quite a while. Um, so I've been basically following whatever Valve has been putting out. Uh, so when did you start first modding? I would say maybe like eight years ago. Like I was creating maps, but I never released anything. For what uh, game? Uh, for Half-Life 2. Two episode two, I believe. Yeah, there's different branches, um, and I opted to use the most recent branch at the time, and that was episode two. Uh, yeah, I haven't really released anything. I, I'm not like a popular modder or anything. Uh, but you're. But I knew about. Yeah, I've been around. Uh, I kind of know the tools and all that stuff, so that's why I'm here, basically. <laughs> yeah, and Vic Frank, who are you? Uh, I started modding when the tools, Valve first released the tools for Dota 2. I'd been interested in modding for a long time since Warcraft 3, but never actually got into it. So I figured, you know, Dota 2 is a game I play a lot. I'll try it out. So I started then. Uh, since then, I've made a bunch of mods. Uh, nobody has ever played any of the mods that I've ever created, but uh, for some reason, I've continued to make them. And... Uh, I made a game for the Frostivus contest, the Frostivus festival. It's like a rip off of Omni Party. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, nobody played it. <laughs> like what exact like previous mods you had? Toyokota. That no, it's Toyokota. Toyoka. Toyoka. So yeah. it's all right. You made, that, <laughs> you made that IO Arcana thing. It wasn't. The, oh yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, the yeah. It wasn't the com companion cube one it was a custom one i put like, yeah, a was... video up of it and... oh yeah i think i saw it, uh, you link it on twitter too yeah um yeah it's uh it's just something i wanted to do uh for a while uh partially <laughs> i wanted to do it because i wanted to see it in game uh because i was trying to get into the workshop uh for a while but i didn't really have the modeling skills 3D modeling, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, hmm, maybe I can try something else. Maybe I can create effects or something. So I started uh, watching videos of like how to make particles and stuff like that. And I thought it was pretty cool because not a lot of people have been working on stuff like that. So I just went in and started doing that. And yeah, eventually. Is that like a lot of like mats to do all the circular motion with the particles? Yeah, like for me, it was just iteration. The mm. first iteration of like that wisp uh, thing was like really bad. Like now that I look back at it, it just looks like shit. But you have to start somewhere. And for me, it was th that <laughs> that yeah, place. Yeah, quite and ambitious for a start. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you just learn. I, like I've been working on it like on and off for like three years. So it's like... You made zombies, zombies, zombies before. Yes. What was, was it released on the modding client? So this was before Reborn. So in order to actually play custom games, what people did was they'd install this uh, client mod that the nice people in the modding sorry, community my cat. made. Uh, sorry, Joyoka's cat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> He gets a bit excited sometimes, and I think, it's really loud. Um, I, I think yeah. Toyoka probably knows more about that than I do, but uh, it was it was decently popular pre-reborn, and then reborn came out. And 
crushed it. The the other mod I spent a ton of time working on was I actually like recreated Pokemon, like Pokemon Red, as a custom game, which you can play in the workshop right now. Uh, Shameless plug. <laughs> nobody else. But uh, I put I put a bunch of time into that, and uh, it's it's kind of neat. Nice. What was it? The this was like 2015 that Reborn was released. It was like the third quarter. So coming up to more recent times, we have the Frostivus competition. I had been involved in mods in around 2016. I spent like maybe a month or so doing modding stuff and I kind of disappeared and came back a year later, a little bit before the Frostivus competition was announced. My question is, is that, did you see any difference in the modding community or the activity within it once the Frostivus competition was announced? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I personally had basically left the community uh, in the months prior because of general disillusionment of people not playing my games, seeing what games were popular and not being particularly happy about them, um, uh, and a bunch of other people quitting the community. I just kind of fell out. And uh, about a week before the Frost of His Contest, I decided, hey, I have some free time. I'm going to work on my own thing. I was going to make uh, this Diablo-style dungeon game. And um, like the next week, Valve announced their contest. So I just started making this game. <laughs> Valve was like, hey, here's you know $30,000 if you make something for the contest. And I was like, oh, hey, I guess, I guess I'm back into the scene now. Yeah, good time to come back, yeah. And yeah. we were only given two months to do this competition so do you think that was a little bit too much time or too little time or just like the right amount as one of the only people that finished before the deadline <laughs> uh i think that it was a pretty reasonable amount of time i was happy because if the if the deadline was longer if it was like six months or a year i base i, I just wouldn't have made anything because uh, i'd be competing against all these other really huge mods so that would have been a huge time investment but it, it was short enough that i could make something that was like decent sized but not long enough that i felt obligated to you know go all in on something. yeah i agree it's it was um it was enough time to like create something decent like you didn't really have to have like like even if it was just a uh, project for one person you could still do something like decent mm. right and uh, what do you think like uh type Taikota about uh, like new people. Do you think that any new people came into the community based on this yeah, competition? I definitely saw like an increase in people uh, in the Discord and all that stuff. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I saw a bunch kinda, of people yeah. in the in the help channel, you know, asking for help. They were clearly first time modders, and yeah. um, that channel had been you know pretty dead for a, a long for time. A while, yeah. And now, and ev even now, it's still uh, somewhat more active. But when you look at the actual contest entries, almost all of it's them are from people who have been in the community. The community. Yeah. So when I came back, uh, I was, most of my questions were being answered by Dr. Gester. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this guy is a wizard or something. He knows everything. <laughs> he's a, uh, for people who don't know, he's the guy who made Crumbling Island Arena. With the prize money with Frost of it was 30,000 US dollars. And a lot of people that have like no idea about modding, they're like, whoa, that's way more than people should be getting. Like, what do you think about the prize money? Uh, in terms of quantity, I don't think it's like if you compare it to the amount of money won for the short film contest, it's comparable. And making a custom game takes a hell of a lot more time than making yeah. a short film. So the quantity of money was not, I think unreasonable actually if you think about it like if you hired if, if you had a team of five people and they all entered the contest and they worked for two months and they earned thirty thousand dollars but over five people that's not actually you know great money as opposed to yeah it's only a full-time job yeah. and uh crucially the money only goes to one person or one team and everybody else gets nothing, nothing. Yeah, and just for context, that the short film contest had 
42 and a half thousand I think it was but it was changed the rules near the end it was that the top 15 actually won prize money so I think <laughs> maybe it was up to 45,000 I don't know if that was right or what but I heard from somewhere that I can't remember the source but that like the top 15 yeah, it was, and it was, the top 10 yeah, it, was, it was that money was split over that amount of winners right mm. so it was I, like 10,000 for like the first place or something like that but the thing is, with like the SFM contests, you know they're gonna happen, and you don't really have as much of a restriction, yeah. Because this, this was first our first time. contest. Yeah, we we didn't even know it was coming. First of all, and second of all, it's yeah, it was kind of I don't know the way they brought it up was just kind of out of the blue, um, and in yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that for freelancers. If, so for people who don't know what a freelancer is, that normally people who get a job is that you go for an interview, you get hired and you work there every day. A freelancer is someone who constantly tries to sell themselves and do mm -hmm. small jobs bit by bit. And often freelancers are paid more money on average than the normal person because they're not guaranteed to have work next week or tomorrow or whatever, depending on what their projects or the contracts they have. But with the modding competition, that's there you have this thing that's kind of like a, a contract bid it's a similar there's different variations of a contract bid and it's just like where you have one lot of prize money well like not really prize money but it's like the amount of money that they're going to pay you to get it done um and a lot of time freelancers actually shy away from it because you don't build a relationship with the client like the person who's offering the money and there's no guarantee that the event will happen again. So with 30,000, I think that it sh should even be higher than that because a lot of the time, like if you look at the prices for someone with a computer science background, they'll be getting paid around two to two and a half times the wages of someone getting a normal job, like an hourly wage. Yeah, uh, I, yeah mean, I agree. I agree that if, if this was actually like a worthwhile investment, of your time then it would have to have been more money uh although it's worth considering that thirty thousand dollars means something different to somebody living in the u.s like me and somebody mm -hmm. living in a um, poor Europe, country yeah yeah i wanted to like put this idea out to you there um is that if valves hired a team of existing modders rather than having a competition what would you think of something like that i mean i definitely be for that is as, as a uh, game developer but uh i Same. if if i put myself into valve's shoes i'd see why they'd be reluctant to do that because the, we're very much an unknown quantity uh there's some people like chalky brush dr gester noya the people who have earned custom game passes i can see valve working with them in some mm -hmm. official capacity but uh if they just you know went to the community and tried hiring random people that's yeah, too much really of a question out. mark they don't yeah. they don't really know who we it's are a very very big very big risk for potentially not even that much of a gain for Valve. Uh, and yeah, it's just... we're already making games in the first right. place. So why would, why would they yeah. want to pay us for doing what we're already doing? Mm. Yeah. So how many games did you make, Vic Frank, for the Crossfit competition? So I have technically submitted four games. <laughs> one, of, oh boy. <laughs> one of those games I submitted after the deadline, and it was just a game that I'd made before the before the contest had even started, just to kind of protest um, <laughs> the whole <laughs> rules and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Val Valve sent an email to one of the contestants saying that uh, you could submit bug fixes past the deadline, and there's no follow. They haven't followed up on what they mean by what constitutes a bug fix or what they check to see if a bug fix is. So some people in the community have taken that as, oh, I can just update my mod as much as I want past the deadline and get away with it. And uh, I was kind of upset by that. So I just uh, submitted what I thought would be the most blatantly... <laughs> 
in violation of the rules game possible. But the funny thing about it is that it's not official and we don't even know if that email existed. There's not even a screenshot of it. The guy who That's right. We, we, we only have our hoax word. Uh, well, actually, uh, um, Dr. Jester also got the email. Uh, and apparently it was like the exact same email. So maybe it was like copy pasted. Mm. But uh, he confirmed it. So or like it's... It? What if Arhau owns in on that a, email? In on the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's in on the whole thing. He's trying to get everyone yeah. disqualified. Here we go. Dota 2 conspiracies. <laughs> get your tinfoil hats out. <laughs> so Yeah, no, the whole contest was kind of not well planned, I think. It could have gone better. But there I mean, at least they're trying, so that I'm not I'm not really one to complain. I think that there need to be like a few more specific rules or something like mm -hmm. that. I think that Valve needs a person that we can talk to to clarify what the rules are. And also to point to <laughs> when they break difficult. all of our games halfway through the contest. <laughs> mm. We'll oh, go on to that like in, in a few minutes, but I just want to say like this is like direct quote from their blog post. Each entry must be a new custom game, heavily themed around the frost of a season, and may be either cooperative or competitive against the players. To enter, you must submit the final copy of your custom game by November 20th. The winning entry will be selected by Valve and receive a prize of 30,000 US dollars. Now, the funny thing about this is that it says heavily themed around the frost of a season. What does that actually mean? Yeah, a lot of people have taken that as just, oh, if I make a s map with snow in it, then that's Frostivus themed. Because if you think about it, Valve themselves has never actually made a Frostivus custom game. Uh, the only two previous Frost events, Frostivus events were Wraith Knight, which had nothing to do with Frostivus, and the Grieveling, which was kind of related to Frostivus, but also not. So the only thing we have to go about for what Frostivus even is, is like this couple of paragraphs describing the Frostivus um, holiday. Uh, yeah, it's very vague. There's not really much to go off of. So you can't really blame somebody for making a, a custom game mode that just has snow in it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I did. A lot of the time you can kind of like see with game jams that you have a team that you make a game around and uh, if you think about like the team a lot of the time you're thinking about gifts or giving or snow and winter with the idea of frost of us so like how did you incorporate something like that into your game my idea was basically come up with a fun game first and then figure out how to make it frost of his theme mm -hmm. second uh, I actually I made a I made a game like the first day of the contest that was just an overthrow ripoff where you yeah. get random abilities from presents. <laughs> and you put um, a Santa hat. I put a Santa hat on the loading screen, not on the, not on the models <laughs> in the game. To be clear, that would have required actual work, and I did not do that. <laughs> and uh, like, what was your best? Your best mod was like Omni Party, which is right. Kinda, like, that was the Frost of Festival. It's yeah. just uh, a series of mini games where you where you're trying like the best on the leaderboard. It's kind of like a uh, Mario Party, but for Yeah. Uh, I initially, my ideas for the games were all kind of like Frost of themed. Like I wrote down, all right, who, what, what are all of the ice themed heroes? And what are all of the assets that are sort of Christmassy? Like there's a present asset and there's snowballs. Those are Christmassy. Um, and then I tried to make games out of them. And then I realized you know what? Heck, uh, if I just make a game, uh, it'll 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 be it'll be frostivus enough. Uh, I think that the reason Valve made that rule was basically to discourage people from entering in games they had been making before the contest and submitting that as their entry. Uh, the example I like to uh, talk about is there is a user called Movezig or Moviezig. And he has a custom game he's been working on for a long time that's called Boss Rush and it has custom heroes and it has um, custom bosses. It's a really high quality mod. 
Uh, but he's been working on it for like a year now, and he's, it's never been public. But if he had submitted it to the custom game contest and just like made the map snow themed, uh, he, he he probably would have just won straight up because you know he he's been working on it way longer than any of us had the chance to work on it. So I, I think that the reason for that rule is to make it harder for people to do something like that. Yeah, so you can't have a pocket strap. Yeah, so you you can't just submit something. You can't just throw snow onto something and, and submit it, e even though I said that's, you know, basically yeah. what people did. Uh, I, I I also, I suspect that the Avalon game, Winter Storm, is in that category. Mm -hmm. I, su I suspect that they, they... It seems like it, yeah. They were working on their own game, and then they were like, hey, uh, if we put snow in this, we can <laughs> enter it into the yeah. contest. Yeah. Takoda. Yeah, uh, with Avalon. our team... Sorry, what? I'm just gonna ask you before asking you about like your team is like who's Avalon? It's a studio, a Chinese studio. I think it was paid by the Newbie team. Yeah, it's uh, it's financed by the owner of Newbie. Yeah, they they get paid a wage to make yeah, custom games. to make games. custom games for Dota Two. Yeah, hmm. so, so that's for people who don't know. They made Realm of Chaos, Naval Warfare, and Battle of Mirkwood. They they make these um, like heavily Warcraft Three esque games mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of custom assets that are retooled in the UI and visually to basically play like a Warcraft 3 game. And they had yeah. like eight people working on theirs and they were all like proper roles and stuff. So, when the contest started actually we, we thought that Avalon would be the easy winner because yeah. uh, they just you know make something and blow us all out of the water because they're doing it for a living and we're not. But and it turns um, well, out that they were split up into like small groups. Of yeah, well, what I heard people. was that they were working on their own project mm -hmm. uh, and and not a Frostivist game. Uh, just the, the owner of Newbie. Apparently, the way it works is I think the owner of Newbie is just like, hey, I want to play a game. This game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it. And, and they, they just, make it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, that's part of the reason why I'm suspicious that their, their entry is not a true Frostivist entry. And as mm -hmm. well, that they have. I assume they have like a pretty large social media following because their custom game had like a huge amount of players the second they launched. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. the Chinese Probably. custom game community seems to actually exist, yeah. which is in direct <laughs> contrast to the English speaking custom game yeah, community. Yeah. Literally every single community that's not North American has like a custom games community that's active, except there like. They're there's completely a South isolated American from them. Scene. There yeah. is a Russian scene. There is a Chinese scene. There is no English scene. Oh, so, yeah. the net result of that is you you will get a lot of con comments on your mod that you cannot you can't read. Yeah, yeah like six six six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Part of what I oh, yeah. So was what your team was doing and what mod you made to Coda. Yeah. So our team, um, right away, we were looking for like. We had, we went through like several ideas, um, and we didn't really get to this snowball, uh, s snow town throwdown idea until Ooh, like, that's later the game, on. Is it? Yeah, uh, I played Vic Frank's yeah. one as well. The... Yay! Yeah, our our original idea, or one of the original ide ideas, was um, some sort of like survival based game mode. So you're like somewhere in the map, and you're trying to survive the wilderness and all that stuff. We were kind of talking back and forth, and then we kind of had a change in idea again. So we went for something like uh, wave-based game mode, uh, which which was like uh, 12 days of Christmas. So mm. like every night there'd be like random creatures coming at you, and then during the day you'd be like yeah. gathering resources or whatever. So but yeah, it was just playability was kind of an important thing, was it? Yeah, I think. We had like problems with scope. We didn't want to like get too ambitious, mm. so we kind of tuned it down, and we just went with like a snowball PVP sort of game mode. Snowball Throwdown is kind of there's two different game modes. There's like capture the capture the flag and yeah elimination elimination yeah. So is it three v three or something like that, or it's up to five v five? I played a three v three. Yeah, we had. I think we. we Initially, we didn't uh, we didn't want to have like separate maps. We just ha wanted to have one map with like five different types of 
modes or something like that. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I think we just, yeah, we didn't get around to it. So we just kind of scoped down the, uh, the the amount of modes and we made each map have its own mode. And you had a, a really fancy 3D models was yeah. <laughs> max of 2D that made them, was it? Uh, actually, most of them, okay, most of the environment was created by uh, a really talented level designer called Invalid Nick. He's, um, he's, yeah, he's a friend of mine. I, I kind of uh, found out about him. He, and he actually worked on some uh, Dota 2 map in the past called uh, Curse of Rivers End, I believe. Core. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we brought him on. And he did most of the models and the level design. Um, then we had another guy. Uh, his name is Malloy or Fika Workshop. That's his like official Steam hmm. username. And he did some models too. He did the character model. Um, oh, he also did the logo. And I did just most of the uh, power up models and stuff like that. So yeah, we kind of all did something. Um, Max of S2D did the animations, I believe. Yeah. And this, uh, one of the, yeah, the skin for the creep model. So, so yeah. Max of 2D is made a lot of stuff in the custom sets in the, sorry, in the workshop. He made a lot of stuff. He was, yeah. wor he worked on the, he did a lot of the animations. The, what's yeah. it, the faceless void T-Rex courier. Faceless yep. Rex is the name of it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and the one that like everyone was buying chests for and like the one in two hundred and fifty chance. Yeah, it's yeah. like one of the super rare couriers or whatever. Yeah. He's also the person that wins the uh, other contest that runs yeah. Oh, yeah, Valve yeah, runs every year. year. Yeah. He won that. For three years straight he won the uh, SFM. Contest. Yeah, he he came yeah. in on the first day of the contest, and he he came into the Discord, and he was like, "Hey, is there any team who wants me?" Because he's like, "Oh, winning winning the uh, SFM contest, the short Three film contest, it's too yeah. easy for me. I need to win, <laughs> I need to win this as well." Hmm. Uh, it was actually our Hawks team, which is how I refer to their team, even though it's probably not fair considering. They That's have, fine. You know, fine. I mean, he's people. the one that gathered everybody. So right. Yeah, um, you could, you could the Snowtown that. Throwdown team. Yeah. Uh, is was a, probably the most intimidating team out there in terms of the contest, in terms of just the names of the people on it. Uh, it was it was pretty interesting in that it had one programmer who was Arhauk, and then everybody else was artists. And the result is that they have by a landslide the best looking game, mm. probably just on the workshop. Uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, so. I remember about halfway through the contest, I got PM'd by a really old modder who was really who used to be really big in the scene called BMD, and he asked me like who who the teams were in the contest and what the competition was looking like because he was interested in maybe making a game for it. And I said, "Oh well, <laughs> if you look at our house team, he has all these really talented people, and it looks like he's they're really serious about making a game for the contest and." Uh, that was part of the reason why uh, he BMD eventually decided not to enter. The, oh wow! Not to make something for the contest. Interesting. The other reason is the fact that there's only one winner. And yeah, that's that's the. I think that's one of the biggest issues people are having with it is that there's no, like you either waste all your time, or not waste, but you take two months to create this thing. And then you just don't end up winning. Like even if you put all your, all your time into it, all all this effort, and then nothing. So, so there's like... this uh, website. They have this structure up where they put out, kind of like a contest, and you have a coding problem which a company puts out, and the prize money might be like five thousand, and they'll distribute that five thousand between like say the top three to five positions, depending on like. Uh, the amount of replies and the quality and they'll pick one from the list but it means that if you're not very good at do dealing with contracts or uh you know like being the best out there in the competition that you still get paid a certain amount and do you mm. think that um the structure of the prize money being first place the only one getting money discouraged a lot of new people coming in 
I don't know if it discouraged new people so much because I think new people probably understood that you know they probably they had no chance like, or something like that. Yeah, yeah uh, there 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 were a couple people that were like professionals in the game industry who hadn't been modding would came into the Discord and talked about how they were thinking about making something for the contest, mm -hmm. yeah. and that that might have discouraged them, but. Uh, definitely the fact that there was only prize money for first place discouraged people from entering the contest, hands down. And it probably discouraged people who did enter the contest from doing their best mm -hmm. uh, because they knew that the odds of them winning were so low. You know, if you have, if you submit like a quality, quality game uh, that's, you know, definitely in the top 10, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's in the top one. And you're competing against 10 other games. And he, here's here's one of the, the big problems with the contest. is The contest is over, and I have no idea who's going to win. And yeah. nobody has any idea who's going to win. Because it's really hard to judge which game is better than other games. All the games have yeah, their it's own... Yeah, it's very uh, subjective. They, they have their own, own pros, their own cons. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have no idea what standards Valve is going to judge the games by. Uh, how they're going to choose a winner and you know and uh it, it, whoever they pick i you know i'm, I'm going to have some reservations about it and, yeah uh, it's going to be interesting the uh, aftermath after they release the uh the judgment of who wins but do you think that there was a lot of warcraft tree mods inspired like inspired by warcraft tree mods released for frost of us uh i don't Except for Winter Storm, which is 1,000% a, um, a Warcraft 3 custom game. And the Taiga game, it's like a Russian game, which is not a real entry, but they, they put it into the contest. And anyway, that's literally a recreation of a Warcraft 3 game. Uh, all of the other games, not so much. I mean, okay, so, so my game is based off of Uther Party, which was a Warcraft 3 custom game. But uh, in... It, it both was and was not. I just, I, I like the idea was from Uther Party, but uh, it was also just kind of, you know, my own thing based collecting a bunch of mini games. So, uh, Toykota, or I keep pronouncing your name wrong, don't I? <laughs> that's fine. Just call me Toy. <laughs> Toyoka, right. That's there it. you go. <laughs> Toyoka. Okay. So, uh, what, like, exactly yeah. was your role? Uh, for me, well, okay, I was mostly just the effects artist, and yeah, I think that's so basically they're like it. particle like, effects for different abilities, right? Yeah, power ups, all that stuff. I don't know, I had my hand in like a bit of the level design as well, like yeah. aesthetically, but yeah, I don't know, I kind of had internal debates about certain aspects of the game mode. Yeah, there's uh, a lot which, of communication that goes on with, like, how yeah. many did you have in your team, like, five or six? Yeah, we had five people. Yeah, I don't know, there were some disagreements about stuff, and, yeah, it just kind of, I think it could have been smoother if we kind of just made a decision and just stuck with it, because sometimes people would just kind of be going back and forth instead yeah, of moving on, sort of. Do you ever you know hear the I'm... saying, too many cooks spoil the brew? Yeah, and it could... Yeah, yeah. That there's too That's... many people trying to direct the project. Was that like Pretty a much. problem? Yeah, s sort of. Yeah. I mean, later on, it kind of died down. Like, we just, you know, we were kind of tired of working on it. So we just yeah. said, whatever, just if implement this or whatever. If there's something well, the... that you could go back and visit, like, uh, that you could redo, what would it be? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's kind of uh, hard to answer. Um, You're just kind of like, you're all I'm, I'm... with what you've yeah I'm, I'm i'm kind of an agreeable person i just i just want whatever to be whatever it's in yeah. the game so it's like yeah i don't have any well that's kind of like the advantage of having a team is that you can focus on one specific thing and right cram down on every part yeah. of the game so, yeah if you were like a solo uh like doing it solo you'd probably have a lot more to, to stress about and like think about but you'd still have control over it so you could put it in a direction that you intended. Yeah. So, in. Vic, Frank, what uh, mistakes did you make, or what would you redo again, or any unexpected stuff that you came across? So, the biggest problem with my game is the fact that I couldn't play test it. it <coughs> I, 
in order to play my game properly, I needed at least three people, preferably eight people, to play my game. And it was ridiculously hard to find more than one person to test my game at a time. And basically every time I tested the game with um, one or more people, I, I see stuff that I wanted to improve. But I only got that chance like two or three times and the couple of times that Bami played my game on stream. So my my game is a lot less polished than it could have been if I had more playtesters. And I mean, it's not really a regret, regret over what I didn't do because I'm not sure what I could have done to get playtesters. I tried promoting my game in a bunch of different places and was not able to find anybody to test my game. Do you think and do you think I think there's a problem with actually pretty much every game that got submitted is a lack of testing. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that was just a general issue because we were also focused on just completing, like, or finalizing parts of our game mode that are, like, core. And two months, like, you could do that, but at the same what, time, it's sort of, like... What bothered me was how tight-lipped yeah. everybody was about their game modes. Yeah. Nobody would say any... I was the only person putting out information on... Not, yeah. not even, like you know showing screenshots we're just talking about what kind of game i was making people wouldn't mm -hmm. even say what kind of game they were making mm -hmm. and i think part of the reason for that is because people uh didn't know what kind of game they were making it took them a yeah. while to to settle on that but uh do you think you know, you had another the end result or... is that most people didn't release until the past week until the last week yep. and they had very little time to actually play test their game and make it fun yeah, the, and the, the one exception to this is Bami, because Bami has a community of people who was who will play his games. So he was mm -hmm. able to continuously test his game. But for everybody else, maybe Winterstorm also had people that could play their game. Uh, everybody else, they released late and they couldn't get people to play their games. And do you think if you could go back to the start of the competition and you could work as a team, would you have taken that choice just so you could have... Um playtesters or people who would be actively able to playtest your game. That's, that's definitely something I, I've thought about. Just, even just the ability to have somebody to bounce ideas off of would have been mm. really helpful. Mm. But at the same time, I thought, I, I thought, well, what if I had worked with Bomby's team? Because his team had people that could actually playtest, right? And I, and I feel like I could have contributed to the game. At the same time, it's really frustrating to work with other people, as Toyoka mentioned earlier. Yeah. But they don't always agree with you. So mm -hmm. you have your ideas of how the game should be. They have their ideas of how the game should be. And the net result is often that things just don't get done. So that's why I worked alone. It's just, you know, I make a decision, I implement the decision, and the end of the story. Uh, so there's, I mean, there, there, there's pros and cons. A lot of uh, these decisions are going towards thinking about, like, what the judges are going to think and who, like, we're always thinking about, like, how are they going to judge this or how are they going to figure out which one is better? Because even though they're based around Frostfus, like, multiplayer games either being PvP or PvE, it can be like quite difficult to judge it but mm -hmm. um we had like the deadline which was the 20th of november and it got pushed forward to the 24th of november um and you vic frank made your game in time for the deadline but it got pushed forward and you were were you kind of like annoyed by that yeah, uh, Bami made a thread on Reddit asking for the deadline to be extended, and I was one of two people that were the main people saying not to extend the deadline, the other person being Arhok on Toyogi's team. Um, and it's not that I felt that strongly about it. It's just it didn't seem fair to me that, you know, I had worked on my game and got it done on time, and now all these other people who were really secretive about their games and uh, in some cases didn't, f quite frankly, just put off working on their game until the last moment, um, were getting an extension onto their stuff uh, because they didn't schedule properly. And I, I just, I didn't think that was fair to, yeah, but yeah, you know, it, it was, it was they extended the deadline, uh, you know, 
people's games got better because of the deadline. A lot of games improved actually quite dramatically yeah, in the four days. <laughs> mine was uh, like really bad because I started doing stuff before the end of October. 7.0 came out on November. It wasn't November 1st, it was October 30th. And uh, what happened was that the tools were broken for like a day, was it? Yeah, the uh, tools... Was too it was a day it's, and a half or something like that. Yeah, the, the tools were broken for a lot of people. They weren't broken for me, but they were broken for a lot of people uh, for about a day and a half. And during that period of time, we didn't really know when they would get fixed. So that yeah, was, it was it very was scary. Yeah, it was, it was like a panic situation for everybody because we were just like, Is Valve, does Valve know about this? Like, yeah. and, <laughs> what, What's going on here? On, on top yeah. of the tools being broken, um, a bunch of other things also got broken in the update. Uh, and it was it was not a not a good time. To be one yes. thing to notice as well is that a lot of heroes have talents that changed and that can potentially break your game, such as like Phoenix, like Dive is now like a uh, way more units, so you can actually go off the map. Do you have like I had a problem with that. I had to remove Phoenix from the game, but um, like with this deadline increase i think as well as that valve were probably not even going to look at the games during that week because it was coming up to thanksgiving do you think that what do you think the like does that sound right that they're not going to look at it until the weekend after thanksgiving probably uh, i i wouldn't know i'm not canadian i mean i'm not <laughs> I'm not i'm not from the u.s i am canadian uh but i don't yeah. know I don't know how it works. So. And it's like they put it up on their Facebook uh, saying, hey, hey, you guys, let's like go. Up yeah, that was, things far as that was the other thing. It was their communication was kind of scattered, like the whole bug fixing thing being allowed. Like all the other communities don't even know about it except for us. We don't have. Right, right. If, if, is, if you are like, not in contact with the two people that Valve yeah. emailed, you have you you do not know um, yeah. about the bug bug fix rule, hmm. which is only a tenuous rule. Like the rule says that we may yeah. or may not <laughs> count your bug fixes as inclusions was, to the game. Yeah, it was very vague, and it's just I don't know. I kind of wish Valve communicated a bit better in and general. The judging is really ambiguous as well we don't know are they actually going to use the community's votes to determine games or are they actually no way not... no way do they well, look at the community's votes they're okay their original rule like it, it, on the site it says they're gonna choose like the valve is gonna choose mm. so they might take into account the community's votes but that's not gonna be the like the final and a lot of people thought as well that our thing. mods would get showcased like how the sfm contest has like a special thing mm. that comes up on the home page we got like none of that or we haven't got it yet anyways yeah there there wasn't really any like uh i mean there was a blog post but yeah that was it. they didn't have like an in-game announcement saying and a lot oh, of look, people, there's all these custom games. a lot of yeah. people probably thought as well as that oh you're going to be like the next dark moon you're going to be showcased as like the special event for this mm -hmm. christmas time that's what a lot of people thought i thought that as well that that may have been val's intention i think they yeah. left it de deliberately vague because they didn't yeah, know just so they could change they, stuff they had no without, idea like, like what the quality of the games that would have been right. submitted were that's also i think why they only had prize for first place because yeah. like uh, you know, thirty thousand dollars. You're likely yeah. to get at least one person who tried. But... Yeah, they don't even know. Like, they can't really gauge the, uh, like, the interest of who actually wants to get into the contest. So at least having one prize would, like, it would make sense, right? Like having yeah. three, like three places. I don't know. Maybe like the third custom game would be just some like rip off of something else. Who do you think is gonna win from like your current perspective? Like it's just anyone. Do you think there's like maybe about five or six mods that could win? I I think there's there's like ten mods honestly that could win. I wouldn't be that surprised. Just not not because these mods are like really good, but just because none of them are are that good. To to be quite honest, nobody's playing any of our games except yeah. for you know there's a handful of people playing Feast of Us after. 
Bulldog streamed it, and there's uh, some people playing Winter Storm, which I have to imagine is going to continue to be updated after the contest ends. But other than that, none of our games are getting played by anybody. And, you know, there's part of the reason is because it's hard to get exposure for, for games. And part of the reason is because, honestly, none of the games are, you know... Really that, that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it, my game's awesome, uh, <laughs> but... I mean, I'm going to be a bit biased. I think it, it really depends on how they're going to judge. But from gameplay alone, I don't. I, I think we might not. Like my team probably won't be able to win, just from that. Um, but like aesthetics and all that stuff, maybe. But yeah, yeah like there's our, there's a whole bunch of good games out there. So if they judged based on potential, like yeah. it, are they going to fix the game up and then release it as as part of their winter pass or or uh, as a game in the client? Um, that's one set of standards they might use mm -hmm. or is it how good is the game right now how fun is it to play that's another set of standards if i were to judge what games i thought would, would win i wouldn't give you one answer instead i'd list out just like all of the games i thought could win and then mm -hmm. say what was good about them uh snowtown throwdown has by far the best assets it's you know not even a question. The game's beautiful. I think that with probably not that much tuning, it could also be pretty fun to play. But to be honest, in its current state, it's, yeah, it's uh, it just hasn't dull. been play tested enough. Yeah. Uh, and with the judging, it's listed on the blog that they're going to announce the winner within eight weeks after the competition ends, <laughs> which is like January twelfth. So we might yep. even know who the winner is until like people are back yeah. to school. And I mean, you know, what if, what happens if they exceed that deadline? <laughs> you never know. It could like, happen. Knowing Bell, they just could forget also. about it. Which is yeah. something that a lot it's of people. It's like, uh, oh yeah, uh, we're back here in February announcing the winner. <laughs> I just want to finish this up on like one last question I have for both of you is that if you had someone that was going to tell you a good night story and it had to be one of the Dota heroes, who would it be? Uh, Crystal Maiden. Oh, obviously, like the typical answer that people I'd, pick. I'd say Bane because I'm a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I'd pick? Just, like, like all Dota two modders are. No, I'm just kidding. I'd pick a uh, Keeper of Delight. You'd oh. have some fascinating <laughs> stories. <laughs> Hopefully there's like an episode two of this, not like some other podcasts. Uh, yeah. I hope so too. I wonder who I'll have next time. Uh, I'll probably like try and get, i say Arhawk. Do you think he'll come on? Mm, possibly. I don't know. I think he <laughs> he's kind of tired of the whole <laughs> Dota 2 mining scene. So maybe not. <laughs> we'll see though. Who okay, knows? yeah. All right. See you so next episode. <laughs> We could just say some outrageous things about people so that they have to come onto the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just the end. <laughs> like I, I could I could go on a five minute spiel right now about Dark Lord and guarantee that he's on your next <laughs> podcast. You heard it here first.